Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to the Mod Madness in the uh, Sweet 16 Defensive Pistol Showdown we just had. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the first 16 pistols that we faced off against each other. Coming up next, we're going to have the Elite 8 group of pistols down to the final four, and then finally up to the last two to basically round out the, match, the March Madness of Defensive Pistols. A box. All right, folks. So we're hope you're enjoying following the bracket that we got going on. Uh, we just finished up the Elite Eight and we're down to the final four. Uh, just a little recap of what happened in the Elite Eight. The Glock 19 went up against the Caracal F in 9mm. The Glock 19 actually beat up the Caracal. The Caracal was kind of my dark horse. I was hoping it was going to come through, but the 19 beat up the Caracal for the fact that essentially against the F series it's a little bit smaller gun a little bit easier to conceal and the fact the Glock's been around a lot longer it's a much more proven system and there is a lot more aftermarket stuff out in the market for the Glock uh, especially when it comes to holster options concealed carry options and stuff like that the next battle was the Smith & Wesson MP40 compact versus the Smith & Wesson model 60 the MP40 compact won out basically because of the round count again double action striker fired polymer pistol uh, you're gonna get 12 rounds plus one in that gun versus the five rounds in the Smith & Wesson 60. A lot easier to manipulate and obviously a lot more round count and uh, you know just a, a little bit better gun in my eyes. <clears throat> uh, the next battle was the Ruger SR9 versus the Carp PM9. The only drawback to the Ruger in that battle was the fact that it does have the safety which you do have to manipulate but you're talking about 17 and one rounds versus seven and one rounds. Uh, the Ruger is a little bit bigger than the PM9 but when you when you're comparing them kind of apples to apples, the Ruger does beat up for the fact that you reload the PM9 three times to the one Ruger magazine. And then finally, the Sig 226 versus the Smith and Wesson M&P9. 226 again, it's a great gun. Uh, it's in service with a couple different people, but the fact that the M&P is the double action striker fired, and you don't have to decock the gun when you return to and from the holster each and every single time. Same consistent trigger pull each and every time. Uh, a little bit more ergonomic. A lot of guys like the 18 degree grip angle on that gun. Uh, a little bit more modular than the SIG than the SIG is, and it beat the SIG out. So stay tuned for the final four and then the championship. And hope you guys get a gun or a horse in the race. I guess you could say. Headshot. Hey! Up! Four! Alright folks, we're almost ready to close out March Madness with the defensive pistols. Uh, we started off with obviously the Sweet 16, went down to the Elite 8, the Final Four. Uh, the Final Four was the Smith & Wesson M&P 9 versus a Ruger SR9. The M&P won out. Reason being, uh, they both have the same exact magazine capacity, but the MP won out for the pure fact that it's a little bit more ergonomic and the absence of the safety, which the Ruger does have. Uh, having to manipulate that safety back and forth each time during a dynamic critical incident when there's a fine loss of motor skills is something that could hinder you in a defensive situation. Uh, the other two guns that faced off were the Glock 19 and the Smith & Wesson MP40 Compact. Glock 19 won out. The M&P is limited in the round count. It's 12 and 1 as opposed to the Glock with the 15 and 1 with a 9 mm And with the 9 mm bullet, you're going to have a lot easier and faster follow-up shots. A lot less time getting back on target because of the fact that the 40 is a lot more snap and a little bit more recoil to it. Uh, plus, the Glock 19 fits in people's hands a little bit better. It is a little bit bigger platform. And essentially, it, it, it won out, did beat the M&P. So now we have a battle of epic proportions. Smith & Wesson M&P 9 versus the Glock 19. Don't know how it's going to play out. We're going to run a couple of different balance of speed and precision drills. I'm going to have two of my best shooters, what I consider my best shooters, target shooter Jim and Fancy Ralph go head-to-head -head in a face-off. Uh, Ralph is definitely an MMP guy. Jimmy's definitely a Glock guy. So we're going to switch them up. I'm going to give Ralph the Glock, give Jimmy the MMP, see what happens.
All right, guys, here we go. We're going to run through a few combat focus shooting drills, some balance of speed and precision drills. Uh, Jimmy's got the M&P 9, Ralph has the Glock 19. We're going to square them off against each other and see who wins this March Madness with defensive handguns. Put your eyes and ears on. Make ready if you need to. Good luck, Ralph. You too, Jim. Fancy Ralph versus target shooter Jim. Up! 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 Headshot! Cool. Alright guys, open up the slides in those guns, we can see they're empty. Empty, empty. Take a walk down range, see how we did. So here's Jimmy's target, using the M&P 9 from 12 feet. A lot of great grouping there in the high center chest. You got the A box, it's three, headshot, two. Let's go over to Ralphie Boy's target. Ralph shooting the Glock, which he's not that comfortable with, which is why I made him shoot it. Decent grouping in the high center chest. All of his rounds in the A box. Missed the three. A little high on the headshot. I don't know what he was shooting at, the number two. 1911 guy, what do you want? All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed our March Madness with our face-off of the 16 defensive pistols we consider to be some of those popular defensive pistols in the firearms industry right now. As you guys saw, the Smith & Wesson M&P that was shot by Jimmy actually won out beat the Glock 19. Uh, kind of heartbreaking for me because I do carry the Glock. I use it a lot extensively in a lot of classes, but I have recently become a big fan of the M&P platform pistols. We pit Jimmy up against Ralph. Ralph's an M&P guy. Jimmy's a Glock guy. We swapped them off, gave Jimmy the M&P, gave Ralph the Glock, and see how each one would fare with kind of a weapon that I guess you could say was foreign to one another. And again, the M&P came out on top. A lot of great features about the M&P. Uh, it is actually replacing Glock in a lot of platforms across the police and military, or police mostly. Uh, a lot of police departments are switching over to the M&P platform because it's a, bit, a little bit more versatile than the Glock series of pistols have been. Um, so it's great gun. I still consider it kind of up-and-coming gun because it doesn't really have the reputation the Glocks have. Glock's been around a lot longer than the M&P, and M&P is kind of new on the scene, I guess you could say, but it is a great pistol, great weapon system. Uh, if you guys get a chance, go out and shoot one, and trust me, you will fall in love with one. I'm a huge Glock fanboy, and as I said, my heart was broken with MP1, but in my eyes, it is a it is a, is a great superior platform. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the video. We had a lot of fun making it. For more informative videos, check us out on the web, drftraining.com. Find us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you guys like some of the drills you saw today, they are from the Combat Focus Shooting Curriculum. To find out more about Combat Focus Shooting, visit them on the web, combatfocusshooting.com or icetraining.us. And always remember, only hits count.